In the not so distant future, the United States is in the midst of a second civil war between the US Army and the Free States of America, turning the island of Manhattan into a demilitarized zone where they called a ceasefire. This woman, Alma Ortega, is taking care of this other girl and recalls a memory of evacuation day. Everyone is running towards the bus, but when she turns around, her son Christian Ortega is gone. She searched both countries for him ever since and believes that he might be in Manhattan, which she hasn't been able to get into until now. She gets smuggled into the DMZ that night, but needs to return at 4 a.m. or she's not coming back. Alma decides to start at the clinic where she used to work. After helping out the nurse Rose, she gets her hands on the patient logs, but Rose tells her she might have better luck with the traders. On the way there, Alma gets mugged and she chases him into a hot zone. He tries climbing the fence but gets electrocuted and she gets fired upon. For whatever reason, Rose was slowly creeping forward so that she could get shot I guess, so Alma takes her back to the clinic. She makes her way over to Chinatown to tell you guys to subscribe for more content like this, then takes a detour and ends up at the tea house and meets with her old friend Wilson. He explains that he robbed a bank during the evacuation and built all of this, but no, he hasn't seen her son. She finally returns to the clinic that night, but hears gunfire and finds out that Rose was the target. Odie is the little kid that used to hang around Rose, and she pulls him aside to make him that grilled cheese that he likes so much. Alma makes it back to the rendezvous point just in time, and this guy starts talking about Parco and his son Skell, and Alma gets flashbacks to her previous life before all of this with Parco and her son. She turns around, but she doesn't have much of a choice because because US soldiers show up and chase her back into the DMZ. She paints a message on Scale's public hit list, and I guess the sun rises early in Manhattan because at 4am is practically daytime. While all this was happening, there was a crazy party in Central Park. Parco Delgado shows up to make a speech and welcomes six of the eight major gangs. He's running for governor for the DMZ and promises to be the voice that unites them blah 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 politics. He later meets with one of the gangs called the 2-4, where their leader Jordan tells Parco that they won't support him in the election. You see, parco has been using gold to buy out support from the gangs, and the two fours won't have any of that. This angers him so he's like fine, if you can walk out of here alive. But he has to go through skill, and he loses pretty badly to the young man. So then he goes, you better back me now. During a basketball game, Skell kills both men and leaves with two gold bars hidden in the ground. Shortly after, Susie informs Wilson that his gold is disappearing, suggesting that there's a rat among his three men. Alma returns to ask Wilson about Skell, but he doesn't tell her anything, and when she mentions Una, he turns around and gives her his address. They finally come face to face, but he acts all tough and tells her that she didn't lose him. He ran away that day because Parco empowered him instead of trying to take it away from him, then angrily forces her to leave. After meeting with his pops and learning that several more groups are going to endorse him, he makes his way to a bar where he's mesmerized by the singer. They introduce each other as Christian and Tenny, and he takes her home. Alma bumps into Odie and Nico, who warns her that the area ahead is full of cannibals, so Odie leads her on a different path to Una. Alma introduces herself as Z, a nickname given to her by Odie. They go for a stroll in the garden where she reveals that she controls the water supply. When this first started, people were after guns and money, so she took the resource that people needed to survive. Z does more talking and tries to convince her that she has a stake in this election, in all of this. Z and Odie return to the clinic where he reveals that he knows Rose is dead, so Z lets him stay with her as they've grown quite close. The debate between Parco and Wilson takes place that night, and unfortunately it ends in a landslide victory for Parco, but Una appears and she's announcing she's giving her full support to Z, who announces her support for Wilson, and they wastefully unleash all the water. Alma is summoned to Wilson and has a conversation with Susie about what she intends to do after she finds her son. Wilson then shows her to his torture chamber, and tells the rat to arrange a meet with the gold thief and shoots him. Alma helps him after he gives her the name of the thief. Skell. Alma goes to warn Skell that Wilson's going to kill him, but he doesn't answer the door. He's busy with Tenny, who tells him that Wilson took her in when she was young and treated her like his own daughter. She then runs over to Carmen, Parco's partner, asking for Skell. Carmen tells her that she looked after Skell and truly cares for him. In the end, she gives up Parco's location and Alma makes her way over to the yards. She sees Parco cutting a deal with US soldiers who hands over supplies and guns, and she manages to slip out. She finally finds Christian and tries to warn him of what's about to happen, and tells him of Parco's deal with the US. He doesn't believe her and gets caught and escorted away. When he was younger, he came home one day with a tattoo after spending the day with his dad, but Alma called the cops on him for unregistered guns. She took away the one person who let him be free and he was the one who went to save Parco during evacuation day. Word gets out that Wilson has scale, so both groups prepare for their eventual encounter. They blast open the gate, but since ammo is hard to come by, everybody starts punching and slicing and stabbing while Parco and Wilson run inside. A grenade severely weakens Wilson and 
Parko uses this to his advantage to beat up Wilson. Skell finds his way inside and Parko wants him to prove his loyalty. After some hesitation, he throws him out the window, but he doesn't seem too sure of himself. Alma takes over for Wilson and meets with one of the FSA people, in clown shoes. They both go for a stroll and in the end, they negotiate safe passage for her and her son, but they want Susie in return. Tenny leads Alma into a radio room where it is revealed that she's the voice behind the radio that we've been hearing all this time. Despite Alma insisting that she's not going to stay, Tenny convinces her to convince the others that there's still hope. Z starts talking about people's hands and announces that she will challenge Parko in the election. Parko finds Odie and Nico running around and persuades him into believing that FSA soldiers are going to hurt Z and he can help change that by carrying a bomb to the entrance of the FSA. Z finds Parko but he leaves with Odie and Scale pops out of nowhere to save Z and the both of them track down Parko. On the way there, Z tells him Parko's deal with the US is to bomb the entrance of the FSA because the US is ready to invade. Z arrives in time and convinces them to run away and she disables the trigger just in time before they get a chance to blow it. Angry that his plan isn't working, Parko goes down there to finish things himself, but he doesn't know that Christian is there. His gun is empty and they resort to a fist fight. He's obviously no match for the young man and they take him to the US where they arrest him. Z convinces Christian to leave with her but stops at the entrance. She tells him to go with Tenny because there's a greater calling for her and returns to her people in the DMZ. Odie takes over as radio host and announces through the radio that Z has won the election and she gives her final speech as the US Army leaves their post. Please check out my channel for more videos like these.